Hello, and welcome to another Story Explained video. In this one, we'll be exploring the story behind Asobo's visually beautiful but slightly disturbing A Plague Tale Innocence. An amazing mix of stealth and strategy, this game had moments of frustration, but overall, it was a great experience. But that's enough of an intro, let's jump in. 1348, Aquitaine, France. Young noblewoman Amicia Darun is out for a walk with her father Robert Darun and their dog Leon. After some devastatingly accurate target practice with her sling, Leon runs off and things quickly take a dark turn, as Amicia finds Leon mortally wounded and then the poor dog inexplicably gets pulled into the ground. Visibly shaken, Amicia and her father go back home and Amicia goes to see her mother, who is dismissive of Amicia's upset at the shocking demise of her dog. Amicia's little brother Hugo is sick, and from early signs, at least, it seems that Amicia doesn't see much of her brother due to an illness meaning that he's being locked away. As a result, Amicia seems to have a strained relationship with her mother due to the fact that she's always tending to Hugo. At that moment, English Inquisition troops led by the knight Lord Nicholas turn up and kill Amicia's father and commence in killing all the Darun staff. They are all asking to know where Hugo is. Amicia escapes with her brother and her mother, they manage to sneak to the back gate, but are interrupted by Lord Nicholas, just as Amicia's mother informs them they need to find a doctor called Laurentius, who has been helping deal with Hugo's illness. Amicia's mother and a member of their staff sacrifice themselves in order to help the children escape. After being chased by troops while the ground bizarrely erupts around them, they jump into a river and escape. Amicia and Hugo come across a village which has been ravaged by something called the Bite. The villagers are defensive and hostile and Amicia and Hugo have to escape, and at the church, they see firsthand what these rats can do. After avoiding the Inquisition troops, they manage to reach Laurentius's farm, but Laurentius has been bitten and is gravely ill. With his young assistant Lucas by his side, Laurentius informs Amicia that they were working on a cure for Hugo's illness, and that Amicia needs to continue her mother's work. At this moment, the farm is overtaken by the rats, and Amicia, Hugo and Lucas reach a nearby dock and manage to use a boat to escape. On this boat ride, Lucas informs Amicia that Hugo has an evil supernatural disease in his blood called the Prima Macula, and that the leader of the Inquisition, Vitalis Benevon, wants Hugo for his blood. Their destination is the Chateau d'Ombrage, a ruin which used to belong to the Darun family. After a long journey avoiding the rats in the Inquisition and encountering a pair of thieves, a brother and sister named Meli and Arthur, they almost reach their destination as a group until Arthur is captured. The remaining group press onto the chateau, and with the idea of making it their base, Lucas informs Amicia that he needs a forbidden and well-hidden book called the Sanguinis Itinera in order to complete whatever it is that is needed to help Hugo. Amicia and Meli go through the city to find a book in a university and rescue Arthur, with the pair parting ways to complete their respective tasks. With the city full of death, Amicia makes her way through and reaches the university, and with the help of a young blacksmith named Roderick, taken prisoner by the Inquisition, Amicia finds the book and the pair escape back to the chateau. Meli returns with Arthur, who reveals that he was imprisoned, and there is a lady there matching the description of Amicia and Hugo's mother, meaning that she is actually still alive. Hugo, now feeling better because of the elixir created by Lucas, overhears their conversation and runs off to save their mother by joining the Inquisition. After they've taken some of his blood, he escapes and navigates to the dungeons below to save his mother, who reveals to him that due to his condition, he is now able to control the rats. After running into Vitalis and his goons, Hugo is forced to use his power to defend his mother, but ultimately the pair are captured again and Hugo is brainwashed by Vitalis into using his powers for evil instead. This is showcased by the chateau being overwhelmed by rats, with Hugo seemingly under the influence of Lord Nicholas, who kills Arthur. Amicia manages to convince Hugo to snap out of it and they fight Lord Nicholas, attacking him with the rats, killing him. With the chateau no longer safe and with no home left, they decide to put an end to all this, and go after Vitalis himself in order to loosen his grip and to save their mother. Roderick sacrifices himself to help them achieve their goal, and Amicia and Hugo do battle with Vitalis, who has seemingly amassed his own army of rats too. After defeating Vitalis, it seems the rats and the plague have disappeared over the next few days. Meli has left the group, but Lucas, Hugo, Amicia, and their now sick mother leave, presumably to find a home. So that's the plot but I guess we should start unpacking the story by looking at the reason all this is happening and discuss what is known in the game as the Bite. Anyone who studied history in school would remember the Black Plague, a moment in time which took place, in Europe at least, from 1347 to 1351. 
also called the Black Death, the cause of the diseases that rats on slave ships carried fleas, which spread through the Mediterranean and managed to reach Europe through Constantinople and Sicily. Although it's considered that the fleas spread the disease after drinking the blood of the rats, rats were still a key part of all this. This game makes an obvious nod to the Black Plague in the way that it uses rats to spread the disease by fatally biting people. The macula, or the prima macula, is a supernatural disease which has affected the Darun family for centuries. It chose to awaken itself in the blood of young Hugo, but no one knows why or how it chooses its subject. The furthest it can be traced back is the Justinian's plague in 541 AD, around 800 years before the story in the game plays out. The knowledge of this curse was documented in the book Sanguinis Itinera and was locked away and considered forbidden, until Amicia took it from the secret crypt in the university. This book also gave information on how to contain the disease. This is why every civilian or villager is perplexed by the new plague called the Bite and the Rats as they have little to no knowledge of what happened all those years earlier because the information had been locked away and forgotten about. As referred to throughout the game, the Prima Macula has a number of stages that it goes through, evolving inside its host. The first stage is Dormancy, where there are no symptoms. The second stage is the Great Break, where the curse awakens in the blood. The third is the original state, where the host experiences headaches and a tinnitus-like ringing sound whenever rats are nearby. The fourth is called the pre-threshold, where the headaches increase in frequency and severity, and then black veins start to appear. The fifth is the first threshold, where the host suffers extreme pain, rendering them unable to walk by themselves. And the sixth and final stage is called the post-threshold, where the host is no longer experiencing pain, but the veins on them grow more prominent. The host has now got the ability to control large hordes of rats. So the Inquisition are the antagonists of this story and they are tied to the Catholic Church. Their goal is to get rid of heresy and advance the goals of the church. Led by Vitalis Bonavant, known as the Grand Inquisitor, their goal was to find a way to control the macula. The church essentially granted them an army so they could end the disease. They were watching the Darun family for years. Upon the outbreak of the rats and the plague, the Inquisition decided to act and tried to capture Hugo, leading to the attack on the Darun estate upon the orders of Vitalis. And this leads us on to the crazy old man himself. Vitalis Bonavant was bitten by a rat and thus was afflicted by the bite. Vitalis was likely appointed to the position of Grand Inquisitor by the Pope. As Vitalis contracted the bite, his alchemists used a resource called the Episanguis, a mineral of golden appearance which when made into an elixir, slowed the effects of the virus prolonging the inevitable basically. Vitalis needed young Hugo's blood so he could inject the blood into himself and therefore gain power over the rats by entering his bloodstream. However, he didn't plan to use this for good as he wanted to create a new world order by using the rats as a weapon. Vitalis is very smart and due to his extensive research on the macula and his knowledge of the different thresholds, knew that if he threatened the life of Hugo's mother, he would unleash his abilities and go through the threshold by using the rats to defend his mother. He was also sacrificing members of the church and feeding them to his own army of rats that differed in appearance to the black rats as their fur fell off making them appear pale white and they were not afraid of light as opposed to the black rats. He and his inquisition brainwashed Hugo and Vitalis taught Hugo how to abuse his powers in using the rats as seen when Hugo uses the rats to attack the Chateau d'Ambrage. This showed Vitalis' ruthless edge due to him sending Lord Nicholas with Hugo so Hugo would kill Amicia and then Lord Nicholas would kill Hugo, leaving Vitalis as the sole host of the macula and ending the Darun bloodline. Well, those of you with your ear to the ground will be aware that a sequel to A Plague Tale Innocence has been announced for release at some point in 2022. Judging by the trailer and the shots of both Amicia and Hugo, it seems that time has progressed by around two to three years, the rats are back in force, and the Inquisition are still looking for Hugo. At the end of the game, we see that Amicia and Hugo were essentially still on the run with their mother and Lucas, presumably to find a new home as the Inquisition are still actively looking for Hugo, as their goal has not changed even with the death of Vitalis Benevent. It appears from this shot that Hugo is standing on the coastline of what could be Sicily in Italy as it looks very similar in appearance. Also, this woman here appears to have a henna tattoo which made its way to Sicily in the 14th century in the period where the game takes place. But that's just my theory anyway. Either way, I can't wait to play Requiem to find out what happens next in Amicia and Hugo's story, but that's it for this one. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a thumbs up and comment down below and subscribe to the channel to support. But for now, take care and I will see you in the next one.